It's, I was trying to relax and um, just relax in my bed. But they're doing my oxygen delivery, so I have to get up. And I was last laying on the side of the bed. I'm, I'm strange. I got a towel right there. And I'm just laying there. Playing with makeup. I told you makeup relaxes me. I couldn't really go to sleep. But I relaxed. And then... I doze off and wake back up in the daytime. I don't know what it is. Instead of, instead of just staying asleep. So I just... Lay in here and pop up on the pillow and just play with some makeup. It just relaxes me. Not, not doing anything spectacular. I did do a wing. And I put the makeup on with my fingers. So this is the Vance's Oxygen Delivery. Come in. I'm coming. I'm coming. Here I come. One minute. Let me step off the way. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? Uh, uh. I don't... Okay. I have that one big empty one there. And um, I don't really don't need that crate. Because... I can't take that crate back. But this crate? No, I'll take this crate. What crate are you talking about? You can't take that. This one right here. Oh no, I'm, I'm talking about the black crate. I don't need. Yeah. How many did you bring me? Six. Okay. Yeah. I'm just one right there. Take this, you mean? Um, our next time out. Yeah. Oh, that. okay. I was trying to understand what you were saying. You said you can't take this big one, yeah. so I was just letting them just know when I call, right? Okay. All right. You know okay. So. This is, all right. Okay. Yeah. We had the electric go off in here yesterday. What's that? The electric went off in this building yesterday, and you should have saw me. Scrambling, trying to get the affordable one. Mm -hmm. I start panicking. You know, I never experienced that before. It's still going on right now. The hmm? It's still going on right now. No, electric. Oh, the electric. The one electricity one? went off in here. Oh. So I had to um, get that together in the dark. You know, and um, so I said that I will always keep one prepared. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was like, it never happened to me before. So I just automatically panicked. You know, so well, I had to how make... How long did it go out for? About 10 minutes. Yeah, they say it happens like that when the storm, but we didn't have a storm yesterday. If that happens, if it, when, if it was off for like a long period of time, for like at least an hour or two, you'd want to give us a call? Yeah. Cause um, I didn't have the tanks right here. Mm -hmm. You can use these. Yeah, exactly. That's why I had to hook it up. Five and a half hours here. Right, exactly. And I doubt the power would be out. For that me. long, right? Yeah. That's why I didn't worry. It's just that it never happened to me before when it was dark. So I had to calm myself down so I can get the tank hooked up to even get back yeah. on the portable. You know. Mm -hmm. So it was good that it did happen. So and it now. Didn't give you any problems after it started back up there? No, it okay. just kept beeping until the electric came back on. Okay, yeah. if that happens, all you gotta do is shut that off right there. Oh, right, okay. Me... Stop the noise. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you have a good one. All right. Thank you and everything. Take care. Yeah. So. This is just like sharing my um, experience with you guys, my everyday experiences, <laughs> as much as possible.
And um, I have a heavy, and I haven't had a heavy in a long time, guys. And I was downstairs earlier to see if the UPS truck came with my um, alert thing. I think I probably went downstairs too early. Um, I also thought, oh, boy, I haven't been getting any less. Um, I put some collagen patches on this morning and got a little bit of rest last night. So a couple more days of some proper rest. Get a light no sun. And, um, so I went to, um, just check and see if my, uh, alert button came in the mail and the UPS truck came. And at that point it hadn't came. It hadn't come, it hadn't came, it hadn't come. Hadn't come, it had not come, it had not came, come. Don't correct me, don't judge me. It's one or the other. Anyway, so it wasn't there. So, um, I haven't been across the street in the community, I mean, in the place, the community uh, center over there, Erie County Services. Where I used to go and have lunch, and you know, I used to put it on the radio, you know, the nice little place where they serve lunch and everything. So they still serve lunch, but it's bag lunch, and they still give out, you know, the, the um, the, uh, the food that you can bring home, They're like. So I just said, I'll go over there and see what they have. So I'm glad I went because I, didn't eat. I hadn't eaten breakfast by that time. It was late, it was 11 30, 12 o'clock. And so, they had some vegetable soup and some grilled cheese sandwich. I came in here and warmed it up. But I'm going to eat the yogurt now because um, I'm getting hungry again. And they had the yogurt, banish, the vegetable soup, a grilled cheese sandwich, a milk, a pint size milk. Pint? Is that a pint? Yeah, pint size milk. And that's what they had a lunch package. And then I went up line and I got bread, donuts, I got the uh, meatballs, ground beef, ground turkey, guacamole, chunky guacamole, cheese bread. Uh, what else did they have? Um, uh oh. Yeah, meatballs, ground turkey, ground beef. Yeah, and that's what they gave out today. But that's all they had left when I got there. But when I was going out the building, I saw other people coming in. They had uh, sweet trays and, you know, ladies you get, you know, they run out all the other stuff. But you still got to get some good stuff. So, um, the meatballs, I don't even really eat all that processed meat. I'm going to give it to my brother. I don't like processed meat. Um, I will eat it, depends on where it comes from. I prefer not to. Now, if I had, like, a Wawa's meatball sub, Wawa meatball subs are good. So, I would be comfortable eating it. And not because it's any better. It's just that it tastes better. It's still probably not healthy for you because it is already processed meat. And, again, it could be human beings. Can be human meat, you know, you never know. I haven't eaten in there in years, I'm just saying. <laughs> if I had to eat anything processed like that, I would eat. Um, why why is my sub sandwich? And you know what? Smack me because I'm lying. I did have a, a Wendy's burger, a Wendy's twice. Dear jalapeno, cheddar cheese, and bacon sandwiches. With the onion rings on it. It's a bomb. One minute, guys. I gotta open up the yogurt. It's a bomb, diggity bomb, diggity. So I had that twice. But I think I had four of them. Because each time I went sandwiches at a time, not that even both at the same time, just so I can have them the next day if I want to run, so, 
So I'm stirring up the yogurt and um I wasn't planning on getting on here. I just got on here really because they said it was coming with the oxygen and I wanted to see the job but now I'm on here I'm just gonna talk real quick and lay back down. I got this headache and I just took my medicine. So I need to should have ate first. Guys, I cried today. I always try to be so strong and appear to be so strong. You know. But I cried. I cried. I just told God. I did not so frustrated. You know. I quite me sad because the expectations. I don't think it's an um, expectation. It's more so a comparison. Like, if, if I was my mother, if my mother was living, and she was in another city, and got sick, I would move and take care of my mother or eat each other. Yep. I mean, especially if I didn't have, like, a career or things of that nature. And it was just a matter of me just being able to move, making lots of money, living situations, working it out, or, you know, ask my mom. How can we make it happen? Whatever, so I can come take care of you or help take care of you. I will go. I would not let my mom be in another city going through what she's going through by herself. You know, um, I'm not mad at my children because you don't mean you don't love me. Or anything like that. I never even had this conversation with them. I never even asked them to come. You know what I mean? It just was something that really came naturally to me when it come, came to my mind. But I know we living in different times, you know? And then with this internet, some people are okay with this being the way of. As long as they see that you're posting and you're all right and you're talking, like, you're okay. And some people accept that to be their form of communication or seeing and trusting everything. And it's okay with it. And I'm not because I know as soon as I speak, just when I put this camera down, I have real thoughts, real emotions and stuff. And I know you do too. You know, and that's stuff that... You know, we don't share on Facebook or any other platform that we have. Most of us don't, and then some of us do. But then there's still some things I don't share with y'all that I probably would, that I do share with my family when we talk on the phone or whatever. <laughs> so we did have this here um, group that we used to come together all of us at one time are talking in the group and that was cool for a minute and we don't even come together in that group anymore i just feel so distant so disconnected you know and um my family my kids might really just look at this and these are my feelings my disclaimer is there you guys or not doing anything wrong. I'm just talking about my thoughts and my feelings. And um, it does not have anything to do with how you guys feel about me or what I think y'all should do. I'm just talking about in a comparison, what I would do. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad, right or wrong. It just is what it is. And um, I was talking to, you know, 
um, some mine and um, I'm talking about how I want to go home. I'm just going to be just leave me alone. And they remind me that they're your children or adults. If they miss you and want to see you and all that, they, she comes see you. Why should you have to keep running the pull up because you miss your family? Obviously, they are okay with the way dreams are. They're not making no effort to come see you. They haven't been to see you. You know, why should you have to go pull up here? Why they can't come up here? And um, this is what they said to me. And that's for my on the outside looking in. And it made sense to me. I don't have those answers. I just know that times are different. You know, this generation is different. You know, um, I know that there are some children that probably would just, um, you know, take care of their parent or go help their parent or whatever if there's been another city. And then the ones who don't decide that that's something that they want to do or would do doesn't mean that they're wrong. You know, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. You know, I'm just saying what I would do if my mom was alive. I just wish I could have my mom be alive, you know, just one more day or whatever. Just to see my mom just be alive just one more day, you know what I mean? And I'll make it all worth, worth it, you know, so. So I was, I cried, like, she said, like, I haven't cried in a long time. I'm mean, the tears, my eyes get welled up with tears and stuff. Because for the most part, I am, I'm a real, I mean, for the most part, I, I just have a level of acceptance and, and peace, you know, and, I, and the whole time within the nursing facility is one thing, but I'm talking about actually being out here and having to actually live and really take care of myself and stuff. It is not easy. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. It is telling you. And, and I only really, when I get back in my apartment, I feel safe. I feel safe. I feel safe. When I go outside, my anxiety, you know, is up, you know, you know, because I got to gauge myself. I got to take my time, you know, the, it's just the curve sometimes, the pain. Just a lot. It's just a lot, you know, and um, I just get overwhelmed, you know, and, um, so I have to allow myself to, you know, be easy, be easy on myself, and just allow myself to have whatever experiences is coming along with my process. You know, I cannot be somewhere that I'm not. I'm not going to get there until I go through this process at this level. You know, and I don't have to front, you know what I mean? I don't have to front, you know. And act like it's okay every day, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then I also realize that I am exhausted, you know, tired, and um, I have not been in state my since I've been in this apartment. I have not just relaxed a whole day and just stay in my bed and just lay in the bed and just relax and just relax and just relax, you know. It, it, it's, I just haven't, you know, um, and I said, maybe that's what I need to do, just lay down, don't try to figure nothing out, don't worry about, you know, anything, you know, if you, just, and don't try to think about anything, the only thing allowing you to come into your thoughts is the, the things that the Holy Spirit is sending your way. Don't invite no thoughts. You know, just relax your mind and invite the Holy Spirit in with everything. You know, and I just cry the ice, God. You know, teach me how to heal. You know, I'm t I don't I'm gonna think about my family and the, the pain. I'm just tired of hurting when I think about them. I, you know, I cannot think about my brothers and sisters without feeling the pain. You know, and um, I just don't want to, I want to, I cannot X them out, you know, uh, like they're always going to be a memory of them, but I want to get to a point like, like I can think about them and it doesn't hurt, 
You know, it doesn't hurt. It, I cannot think about my brothers and sisters without hurting. You know, and I just, you know, I just say, God, heal me. What, 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 what does it take? What will it take to get them out my system to heal and not hurt? To be at peace with everything, you know. So that's where I'm at. Like, I just want to be healed. You know, I called on the joy of the Lord. You know, I mean, happiness is one thing. Uh, joy is another. Joy is the Lord is my strength. You know, God didn't promise us happiness, but He promised joy. You know, and if I could just feel that joy like I want, take me back to when I first believed. You know, when I first received the Lord, that joy when I shot the first time I ever encountered salvation in Jesus. I remember what that joy felt like. Take me back to when I first received and believed. You, you know what I'm saying? So I know that I'm going to be okay because I'm keep calling out and reaching out to the Lord through it all, honey. You know, I had this elder woman that passed away. I used to call her mom. She said, does we want attraction to me and why I love you is because when you fall, you fall down with your head, but your faith is so strong. And another woman was attracted to me because of it, you know, and because of my faith and stuff. And um, she was attracted to me because of it. And she, she, she's like, you don't look back, you just keep moving forward. And that's all I have. You know, that's all I have. And, you know, I don't want to look back and like Lot's wife and turn into a pool of salt. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing back there for me. I, I mean, I can just be, feel like I'm tired of going forward and just want to give up, give up, and then do what? I mean, nothing in the back interests me. Nothing in the back interests me. And now that I have experience with this light, the light of the world, you know, and, and uh, 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 the light of Christ, like, when I get into dark places, Listen, it's going to take something to stay there. It's going to take you something, some drugs, something, or get caught back up into sin just to stay there because you, I cannot get into darkness and feel uncomfortable with my light. You know, I cannot, no. Uh, so I stay in the light place, you know what I mean? And, 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 and where God sent me with the anointing to go in those places where he's dark so my light can shine. I go with them, them places where he hasn't sent me in the darkness in the world of sin. That's a different darkness that I'm talking about. I'm talking about living in sin as opposed to visiting the dark places to witness. You know, it's, that's what my experience is, my understanding of what I visualize when I talk about darkness. You know, I am going to do all this and I'm talking, though, I can, I can talk, I can talk, I can talk, I can talk. Yeah, you know, I ain't nobody to talk to you but the camera and then somebody will listen later. But I came on here to share with y'all about my advantage. That's what it's called, advantage, not advantage. Advantage um, delivery. That's it. I got caught up into other stuff. So that's how my morning went. I'm off of here. I'm off of here. I'm not going to talk for an hour. I'm not. Peace.